Hello everybody. I'm up here on the ninth floor in the balcony area today. I got permission to um, do a live stream up here. Normally uh, they don't allow any pictures they've told us in the past so I'm way up here high. Um, but anyway, uh, I have a very short time to give a live stream but the government is uh, trying to make the defense rest today. Um, they still have not rested. They're trying to get in another informant that has been identified by the government, but all we know so far as a code name that he's called is John Kilman. And we're told that he is a government informant, but we don't know his real name at this time, and they're trying to stop that from happening. So everybody, all the lawyers and things are still in there in the courtroom, but they made all, all of the observers leave. And uh, they're consulting with each other to see where they go from here, but they're not going to allow most of these informants to be known. The only ones that we know right now that they're probably going to allow is John Kilman, and that's still trying to be decided at this moment. Um, there was an FBI agent that was that took the stand today, and um, he had been on the stand prior. He um, had testified about a month ago at the beginning of the trial for the government and then after he took the stand the interesting part about this is Mr. Gabriel the prosecuting attorney told him to go investigate Dwayne Schrock out of Burns and ask him some questions which it sounds like it's a big conflict of interest with that and um, but he was told to go go uh, ask him some questions and um, he also took the stand again today uh, was asking questions about that Ryan Bundy brought up the point with him and said is it um, is that something that you normally do as an FBI agent that has taken the stand and testified prior in the same case is this something that he would um, go and be told by the government to intimidate a witness that has already uh, that is going to be a witness for the for the defense side so that doesn't seem quite kosher or right but that's uh, one of the things that happened today we still have a lot more going on today it's going to be uh, an inter interesting day I think yet how it turns out so not much else I can say at the moment um, we got to be back in court in about five minutes. I didn't even come off the top floor here to go eat. So um, please uh, uh, check in here at 5 o'clock. I'll have another update for you all. Have a good day and God bless. All right. Stepped outside for a minute here to do an update. Feeling a little bit helpless not being at the courthouse. But John did call and give me an update um, on lunch feeling pretty frustrated right now. Uh, quick update here on Judge Jones. Uh, John did already update on this, but I'm going to go ahead and repeat it just for anybody who did not see his live stream. Judge Jones testified on behalf of the prosecution. And after testifying on behalf of the prosecution, uh, Gabriel Knight instructed him to go visit Dwayne Strzok and ask him questions after they learned that he would be one of the witnesses. He intimidated him to testify that Ammon Bundy would be seen as the leader and Judge, Judge, or Agent Jones also put pressure on Dwayne to testify that he saw guns he did not see at the refuge. He went there on behalf of the prosecution, Ethan Knight. Would the prosecution tolerate the defense sending somebody to one of the prosecution's home, one of the witnesses' homes, and pressuring them to testify a certain way, or would they be called into account for witness tampering? They would be called into account, account so quickly it would be the first thing that this corrupt kangaroo court would address the next day would be what the defense did and when when Ryan tried to bring to light the severity of what agent Jones did 
Judge, there's so many agent, judge, and titles. Judge Jones, silent, Judge Brown silenced him saying that he has questioned this witness enough and his time was done and he was to sit down. This agent intimidated one of their witnesses and Ryan Bundy was told that he had questioned him enough and it was time for him to sit down. So the other uh, thing is that John Kilman has been identified as an informant. I think I have 54 or 84 mutual friends to him. Um, guys, clean up your friends lists, okay? If you learn of somebody being an informant, reporting information back for the government, you know, you could say all day you, you're friends with him just so that you can spy on him, but keep in mind that means he's spying on you too. And being able to access your friends list and things that may have not been public. And what you have to understand is that when these infiltrators get into your friends list and they follow you that way, they don't have to get a warrant to get the information off of your Facebook page. So we can do our part to not be paranoid, but when the political prisoners advise us like they did from day one about Mark McConnell, we could probably just trust them and and go with our instincts and if not you know blocking the people at least removing them as friends and watching them any of you think there's something up with me remove me as a friend or block me i don't care so you know what we're fighting for liberty and freedom for everybody so we shouldn't be shaming each other to keep people on friends lists if you're uncomfortable. If we're going to do that, then we might as well just say we're not fighting for liberty. We're fighting for a dictatorship, and that's not what we're fighting for. So, you know, if you're uncomfortable with somebody, unfriend them. If you're hearing things that's making you uncomfortable, unfriend them, block them, do whatever you need to do to keep yourself and your family and your friends safe. So John Kilman has been identified as an informant, we don't know his real name. He has two accounts. Go ahead and search his name. He may not take the stand because it sounds like some of the information he's going to share could be damning to the defense. And so um, he might not take the stand. So the other part with that is that now any witnesses who take the stand that the defense believes is an informant, the judge is giving them a court-appointed attorney to meet with before they take the stand. Isn't that nice of her? She didn't offer that to Matthew, who was at the refuge. She didn't offer that to Brand, who was at the refuge, but she is now offering that to any future witnesses for today that the defense tries to call. So apparently John Kilman got to meet with a court-appointed attorney and then before the judge would say whether or not he could take the stand, the judge went, paused the, the trial, sent the jury out, and went in the back and met with these attorneys to try and decide if he should, sorry, I shut my phone off, to decide if he should or should not take the stand. The judge is meeting with the informant's attorneys to decide if she should let him take the stand. This is an absolute joke. This is a kangaroo court. This is a complete joke. They have not only been controlling what witnesses for the defense come to the stand, but they control the narrative that they're allowed to discuss. Now the judge is trying to protect the informants. This is why you can't go to court in a federal court case and have a federal judge be presiding over it because she will always look out for the best interest Facebook, stop shutting down my videos. Quit silencing us. It's getting really old. And all you're doing is upsetting more and more people, so knock it off. Sorry, Facebook just randomly shuts my live videos down. This isn't anything new. So the last point that I wanted to make before Facebook so rudely shut my live stream down is that Agent Lapp, L-A-P, testified weeks ago for the prosecution and the defense cross-examined him and asked him if Mark McConnell was the only informant who stayed at the refuge. Agent Lapp said yes. This is before Terry Linnell was subpoenaed and found out about. He said yes, Mark McConnell was the only informant to stay at the refuge and he said quote all other informants stayed in the town of Burns and traveled to and from delivering information at the end of each day to him about what was going on at the refuge. Agent Lapp lied under oath. 
He deceived the defense, making them believe that anybody else they called to the stand that had stayed at the refuge would in fact not be an agent or an informant because he himself said that none of his informants, he was the one in charge of all the informants, so he would have known Terry Linnell was reporting back to him, and instead of answering honestly, he lied and said no, no other informants stayed at the refuge. Now we've learned there are 13, at least 13 more, and their names are not going to be disclosed. How many of those 13 stayed at the refuge? How many of these informants, like Mark McConnell, gave false information to the FBI, which allowed them to justify the illegal roadblock and ambush on Highway 395 on January 26th? This information is important, and it's a, it's a constitutionally protected amendment that you will be brought before your accusers in court, that there won't be secret courts. People informed the FBI that Ryan Payne, informants reported to the FBI that Ryan Payne was going to do something to Sheriff Ward's family. That was a lie. And had the Oregon State Patrol not slipped up on the stand and outed Mark McConnell, they still wouldn't have known to this day where that information came from. So the fact that there are more informants is important to their case because it helps them to understand and to bring these witnesses to the stand to testify why they were lying to the FBI saying that this was a threatening environment, that they were blocking people from coming to work, which they were not doing. These informants that reported this back to the FBI that then justified the ambush need to come to the stand and testify under oath, swearing to tell the truth where this information came from. So that if the defense has proof that they're lying, whether it was because it was on camera or recordings, then the, the defense can prove them to be false witnesses on the stand. At this point, there are so many informants, I don't even know if half of the defendant's witnesses who took the stand, if any of them were paid off to make certain statements. There were a few statements that have been made on the stand that didn't make any sense coming from a defense witness. But the defense just started asking today to each witness if they have been paid to give their testimony or for any information regarding Bunkerville or, or the refuge. That's one other thing. Ryan said that he would ask each witness that today, which he said he has done. He asked Bram Thornton if he has received any payments or information, if he's received any payments for information, and Bram Thornton testified no, he has not. So the judge is, is realizing that as they call these witnesses to the stand, they're being questioned with more scrutiny, and she's trying to protect them, which is why she's letting them have these self-appointed attorneys or court-appointed attorneys before they take the stand. Kidlets are calling me back in. One second. So it, get down right now. So it is a big deal that these witnesses take the stand so that the defense, stop please, right now, right now, so that the defense can properly question these people and find out if they are or not or are not informants. But the uh, judge is gonna protect them. She has told um, Ryan multiple times now to stop talking, to sit down. This is such a joke, you guys. At the beginning of this, I truly believed that as long as they received a jury trial, that they would get a fair shot to present their evidence. I had no idea what a joke of a system this is. It's literally like a movie being played out where Judge Anna Brown is the, the director of the film, and she's deciding what will or will not be said, and then it controls the feelings that the viewers have at the end of the movie based on how the movie was directed. It's, it, it's a total kangaroo court. There is no justice. Judge Brown is protecting the government because that's who signs her paychecks because she's a federal judge. She does not care about the truth getting out. She cares about the Bundys spending the rest of their lives in jail. And you guys are letting it happen if you're not showing up or making phone calls or reaching out to your elected representatives. Michelle Fiore just stood at the house and, and said the name of Lavoie Finicum before Congress. She said that Lavoie Finicum was wrongfully killed because terrorist agencies like the Bureau of Land Management set him up. 
We have very few people that are willing to speak. Get behind those people. Don't listen to the negativity and the lies that some people are spreading about some of our representatives that are actually doing something. Get behind them. Help them. Keep them in office. Get the, get the corrupt ones voted out of office. You guys were supposed to be the ones that are in charge of those who govern us. But the problem is our most of our elected representatives are not truly the governed anymore. They are bought and paid for. So they're not really representing us. That's why we need to get them removed from office. You guys, we need thousands of people to hit the street. This is just ridiculous. This whole court, did you know that they allotted $100 million for this case? $100 million our government allotted for this case to get a couple ranchers put behind bars for supposedly impeding somebody from coming to work. Supposedly. $100 million to prove that somebody kept the king's people from coming to work this is so much bigger than that stupid refuge and if you guys haven't figured that out yet your head is in the sand and you're doing nothing to help pull your head out educate your neighbors help people to understand what's going on because it's gonna get worse and when it gets worse you will have nobody to blame but yourself because our founders fought to keep this very thing from happening Call your elected representatives today. Let them know about the kangaroo court that's happening in Oregon. Get Judge Anna Brown removed from her seat. Let's figure out how we can get some justice back in this injustice system. That's, that's all I have for now, guys. We'll do another update later or just follow John's page. Hopefully he'll get back to it uh, once court is out.